In this equilibrium problem, I'm trying to get the tension in the string over here, and I have a heavy rod with a mass of 380 grams. I'm given the length of the thing, and there's a hinge pin through it 10 centimeters from the left end, and I'm given the locations of these two hanging masses. So I think the first thing to do is to mark in all of the different distances to the rotation axis here. And what I'm going to do is choose my rotation axis right on the hinge, because when I analyze torque, there will be no torque exerted by the hinge because the lever arm will be zero if I do my analysis there. So let me maybe very first indicate what I'm using as a rotation axis for my analysis. Then let's find some of these distances. So the midpoint of this rod is going to be at the 45 centimeter mark, which would be 35 centimeters from that hinge pin. And there are actually two things going on there. So there's a 500 gram mass suspended there, and that's half a kilogram. And the force of gravity down on that is going to be mg, which is 0.5 times 9.8, or 4.9 newtons. But you don't want to forget that the rod itself has mass. It has 380 grams of mass. And the torque exerted by gravity is as if all of that mass is concentrated right at that midpoint. So I'm going to get a second force pulling down at that midpoint for the purpose of computing the torque. And that's going to be mg for the rod. So that's going to be mg equals 0 0.380 times 9.8. And that comes out to 3.72 newtons. All right, then I have this 200 gram mass, and I'm told that it's located 60 centimeters from the left end of the rod. So the way I've drawn it is a little bit extreme it doesn't quite look like that but 60 centimeters from the left end of the rod that makes it 50 centimeters from the hinge again because the hinge is 10 centimeters from the end of the rod and finally I have my vertical string attached 80 centimeters from the left end of the rod which makes it 70 from the hinge so let's just mark that right here there's a couple things to wrap up here I have the weight of the 200 gram mass so that's going to be 0.2 times 9.8 or 1.96 newtons and finally the thing I'm looking for that tension exerts an upward force through a lever arm of 70 centimeters so now I'm ready to write down that the net torque on this thing must be zero with respect to that hinge pin so I could say the sum of all the torques is equal to zero with respect to that rotation axis or I could express it this way and say that all the clockwise torques better add up to the same number as all the counterclockwise torques. So we've got three clockwise torques here. I have the mass of the stick itself, gravity exerting a torque as if all that mass is sitting right at the center of mass. So that's going to be 3.72 newtons through a lever arm of 35 centimeters. And I can use the non-standard units of Newton centimeters here as long as every term contains that centimeters in it. So let's just see how that turns out. Another clockwise torque, the 500 gram mass, that's 4.9 Newtons of weight exerted through 35 centimeters. Another clockwise torque, the 200 grams that has a weight of 1.96 Newtons. And it was exerted through a lever arm of 50 centimeters. That's all going to be equal to our counterclockwise torques with respect to this rotation axis. And there's only one of those. It's the tension pulling up through a lever arm of 70 centimeters. So the unknown tension pulling through 70 centimeters. And I can see that the units of centimeters cancel. So I could have changed those to meters, but that would be equivalent to just multiplying both sides of an equation by 1 over 100, which has no effect on the value of t. When I crunch the numbers, I get a tension of 5.71 newtons in that string. And this problem actually came from a physics lab that I like to run every year. And what we do is rig up all these systems in real life, predict what the tension is going to be, and then insert a spring scale in here. And we're able to get a percent error out of it.